Hi, thanks for coming. Uh, it says here your name is Skid. It's not Skid. Skid Mark, yo. Like when I'm leaving the scene of the crime, I leave Skid Marks. Right. Uh, it says here you're a rapper. No doubt. Don't do that. My name is Lindley Sobrian, and I'm the co-director of Curse of the Death Punch. My name is Karina Cornforth. I'm the co-director and writer of Curse of the Death Punch. Curse of the Death Punch is a horror film and a martial arts film all rolled into one. It's like taking two things that shouldn't be put together and putting them together. So our goal is to make this film on a completely zero budget. Why? Think of all the films made with millions and millions of dollars. Why do they do that? Because it's easy. That's why everybody does it. Now what we're doing sets us apart. That's why we're making this film with no money. Also because we have no money. So I called in a favor and I got us a free venue for our auditions at a creation center. <laughs> I don't even know what a creation center is, but I love it. Today's gonna be awesome. Do you think we'll get a lot of people? What do you think? <laughs> Casting is the best part of a production. It's like you're the host and everyone wants to come to your party. Casting is the worst part of a production. Let's face it. Actors are a sad breed of human being needing attention at any level. In fact, I'd say it's the second least respected of all professions. It goes vitamin salesman, lion tamer, then actor, and finally, paleontologist. I love hosting parties. When I was a kid, I used to host my very own tea parties and I'd invite everyone from school. And when no one showed up, I'd just have them with my stuffed animals, which is actually way cooler when you think about it. Even then, I still wasn't very well liked. I have no idea whatever happened to Mrs. Muffet. Most respected profession, fire dancer. Creation Center. This will be edition 241. One of these times. Why am I here? Well, I am meant to be a star, that's why. 30 years ago, I was runner up for Little Miss Nanaimo. I'm not bitter. <laughs> why would I be bitter? Why am I making this film? To make it big, so I can fire Joe Pesci. I save his life, and he promises to star in my next film. Well, how can he if he won't answer his emails or his phone, or if he won't even open up the door? She's going to tell you about how she saved Joe Pesci from choking. No one believes that story. No one believes I know the Heimlich? Or no one believes that Joe Pesci would eat a roast beef sandwich? He can eat whatever he wants. He's Joe Pesci! Definitely one of these times. I'm not walking out of that room until they give me a part. I don't really know why I want to make this film. <laughs> Showmanship is important. You know where I learned that? Starlight Theater, Kansas City, September 7th, 1996. Sat front row at the John Tesh concert. Single greatest day of my life. Welcome to the auditions for Curse of the Death Punch. Oh, God! Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Wow. You made it.
We are looking for five special actors today to fill five special roles we have available. Look to your left and now to your right. Odds are not in your favor. As long as I'm alive, Zoltan, you and your zombie army will never get past these gates. And scene. All right, great. Thank you very much. Why isn't she leaving? I don't know if she's really freaking me out. I don't think she's blinked the entire time. So what do we do? I got the word! <laughs> you better step off, Zoltan, or I'll be making you all horizontal up in this piece! Pop, pop, pop! You know what I'm saying? How'd I do? Darren, I know this is not you. I know you are under the spell of the Dark Witch. I am Zoltan. The Destroyer. I've come to punch your men, women, and children and turn them into zombies where they will serve under me as I take over the world because I am Zoltan, the destroyer. Nailed it. Brother, I've been bitten. But I am still able to use my karate against these zombies. It seems our family blood is immune to Zoltan, his death punch, and his army of the dead. You know what we have to do. Repopulate the world by sleeping with every woman left alive, especially the chubby ones. Brother, I feel the time is finally right to tell you, you are adopted. No! So what do we do? We can't cast any of them. Well, they're all still here. And they're looking at us. We told them we were going to make a decision today. We turn off the lights. They'll think we're not here and then eventually go away. Oh, they're not Jehovah's Witnesses. Maybe some of them are. We don't know that. Okay, okay, okay. Here's what we do. I stay here. You go out there and tell them that none of them are any good and they should never act again. What? Why me? This was your stupid idea. You're the one that did it in freaking cremation center. You probably scared most of the people off. Hey, at least I found a place. What did you do? You ordered us a bunch of food with money we don't even have. There's no reason why we can't be a good host. And for your information, I didn't order the food. I found it in the freezer right next to the ovens. I cooked it in. So, turns out, if six people show up to your audition and you feed them food that you cooked in a cremation oven, it's best just to cast them all. Of course, not before you get them to sign a non-disclosure and waiver of liability agreement. When I was a kid, my dad asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I told him, I wanted to be an astronaut. I thought it was the coolest job, you know, like being on top of the world. And my dad... He laughed at me, told me to grow up. I was eight. Everyone who auditioned today, I realized they're just people with hopes and with dreams. And somewhere along the way, life got in the way of that. And then we came along with this film, reminded them of their dreams and that it was okay to still have them. You ask me why I'm making this film. I guess you could say there's a part of me that's still that eight-year-old kid with dreams of being an astronaut.